This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Palette, and I'm the trash man. I eat garbage. And today, hopefully I'm not eating garbage, as we read our special place. Let's see what this story has to offer, and get right into it. It was a warm spring day. Toward, it was towards the end of the school year, and my friends and I had big plans for the summer. My friend Alex came to me and my other friends and said, Hey, you guys free after school? Lucas asked. Why? Got any big plans? Alex shook his head and replied, Nope, but I did find this cool place I think you guys would like. Meet me after in school in the courtyard. Meet me after in school in the courtyard. Okay, that doesn't make any sense to me, but let's continue on. We all agreed, of course. We all thought it was a great idea. So from the title of the story and the beginning of it so far, we're getting that there's probably going to be some urban exploration, which would be nice. Um, that's something that's kind of lost nowadays, is just wandering around the city. We, we're we very um, protective of young people and don't let them go out and explore and get into danger for themselves. So hopefully this could go in that direction. And obviously, urban exploration is kind of, um, at least, at least, tangentially related to realist horror because we see things like Marble Hornets and, 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 uh, Barbie.avi and those kinds of stories and, um, our little Roanoke. So, uh, let's, let's press on. After school that day, I found Alex in the school courtyard talking to Rob and Steve. Lucas came up behind me and said, Come on, what you waiting for? I ran after him, and we all met at our rendezvous, as Steve called it. We all had a good laugh and started walking. Wait, that tense is a little confusing, because it's like, we met at our rendezvous, but we don't know where we're going. The only person who knows where we're going is Alex. Alex of Alex, Steve, Rob, and Lucas. Uh, and it says we all had a good laugh and started walking. Oh, maybe we're meeting at a rendezvous point. To go to our special place. Okay, I got it now. Are we almost there? Lucas asked. No, not yet. Almost, Alex said. By around four o'clock in the afternoon, we made it. Alex said this could be our hideout. The building was a gray house with very, with a few broken windows and a little garden full of dead flowers and weeds. Rob shook his head in disappointment and said, Really? This place is crap. Alex patted his shoulder and said soothingly, Just look at this place. We could restore it. This place could be our hangout spot. We could make it better than before. Alex has al was always good at persuading people. Once he persuaded me to sneak some cigarettes for his friend. Too bad I got caught, but I still had a good laugh about it with my friends. But I still had a good... Oh, uh, wow, Jesus Christ, Brandon, you just read that. As soon as we got inside the place, it looked abandoned for years. The carpet was brown and the walls were a light blue color. Well, that's good. You know, you're color coordinating there. Uh, light blue with brown, that, that works well. Hey, look, Lucas yelled. Power surged the whole house as he turned on the generator to the house. There's nothing grammatically incorrect about that, but the use of the word house twice was a little clumsy. We all smiled and continued examining the house. After we examined the house, we went outside and started, uh, started for our homes. After we examined the house, we went outside and started for our homes. Okay, I can read. That is a sentence that makes sense. <laughs> the story is not not piss poor. I I'm just reading wrong. Okay. Um we exchanged our goodbyes and we saw each other the next day. I don't like that. It says we all continued examining the house and then that's the end of the examination. What else was in the house? It like tell me more details. Anyway, Alex told us before we left that we had to go back. We all agreed as we were excited to restore our hideout. We met in the courtyard. Same place, same time. I just want to point out to everyone, I literally read that backwards. I said same place, same time, and it says same time, same place. This is how bad my my reading comprehension is. Where is Rob? I asked. Hmm, 
I guess he couldn't make it, Alex said. All of us followed Alex again to the hideout. Along the way, we found a shortcut through the forest. This time, we made it there in 33... at 3.30 in the afternoon. When we got there, a foul stench filled the air. Luckily, Steve found some air freshener and sprayed down the whole house. We put towels and blankets over the broken windows and moved some furniture. Lucas called them small improvements. We left the same uh, time as yesterday. After a day at school, we met yet again in the courtyard. This time, it was only Alex and I. He had bags under his eyes and looked like he didn't get any sleep. I asked if he was okay, and he just replied with, Yeah, or, let's get to work. So I wonder when they say, when we got there, there was a foul stench in the house, whether that was there the day before, or if this is a new smell. Uh, presumably, they, they brought the air freshener with them, so they knew that this was a thing. But that'd be interesting if it, they got into a house, and all of a sudden it was smelling bad when it didn't before. But I like that there's something obviously wrong with Alex here. And a lot of the time, it's it, in these kinds of stories, it starts with something really small, like being tired. But I like where this is going. Let's press on. Something strange was going on. After we cleaned the counters and the floors, we left. Alex said nothing. This was odd because Alex always had something to say after we left the hideout. You all right? I asked nervously. Alex just nodded his head and avoided talking to him for the remainder of the trip home. And I avoided talking to him for the remainder of the trip home. We went to sleep that night. I went to sleep that night, racing, thoughts racing through my mind as I slept. The next day after school, I went to the courtyard. Same time, same place, I thought to myself. I checked my watch, and it was the correct time. I waited for 15 more minutes and decided to go alone. When I got into the house, the stench from the two days ago was stronger. I plugged my nose and went down the hallway. Alex was always down here and cleaned the rooms. One room caught my eye. There was a wooden desk with newspaper articles and an envelope with my name on it. Ooh, I opened it. It was a letter from Alex. It read, Dear Jeremy. Well, now we have our narrator's name. Dear Jeremy, I don't know why I picked you guys. I guess you were, I guess you all were my first choice. The truth is, I brought you all down here so I wouldn't die. I know it's selfish, but I just couldn't think of dying. The bodies are in the living room closet. Myself will probably be there by the time you see this. Please do not come back to this house, this hell. Well, goodbye. Sincerely, Alex. My eyes widen, and I went into the living room. More like the dying room. I went into the living room. I opened the closet and saw the bodies. The whole gang was there. Rob, Steve, Lucas, and Alex. I shut the door and sat on the floor, everybody do the dinosaur, putting my face in my hands. I heard a loud dripping noise come from the bedroom I was in. Coming from the bedroom I was just in. I got up and walked slowly to the doorway to look inside the room. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a message on the wall written in blood. It read, This is our special place. I had enough. I grabbed my book bag and ran back to my house, swearing I would never go back to that place. There was a feeling inside me that told me to go back, but I resisted. But I have to confess, I went back a few days later. There was a soft voice behind me as I went in. It said, bring them to me. Bring the flesh. I did as I was told. I told a few of my friends to come hang out with me. We were going to go to the house, and I'm going to do what I need to, to survive. I'm sorry. So sorry. Alright, so that's the conclusion of that story. Um, kind of went out on a whimper, although conceptually, I really do like the end. I like the idea of a house in the middle of nowhere that is calling people to, to kill. However, the story is just too much of a mixed bag. It It is building to something a lot bigger than its means. If you want to build up a story where there's a house that is calling to kill people, um, 
then then I think there needs to be one some characterization. This is a huge flaw that we have in realist horror is not characterizing our characters because it's more about the overall concept. I want to know who these guys are. And this is my biggest criticism. I like that we found out why there was um, a foul smell in the building. That makes sense. I want to know more about the building itself. We need some, some more characterization of not just the characters, but the house, uh, the forest. Uh, or I, I'm just assuming there's a forest, because we're, we're not given a whole lot of description about the rendezvous point and everything. But we need to have better characterization of the setting, the house, the characters. Overall, the skeleton of this is working well. The story needs to be about twice as long uh, to, to fit in all that the story is building to. It's it's a little bit too quick to the gun, <laughs> to, to the punch. But conceptually, there there's something here. The story really did hit on something. Um, the the message written in blood entirely unnecessary. We know that this that this place is our special place. We don't need that written in blood. Um, the the house saying "Bring them to me, bring them flesh." Maybe the house doesn't really need to say that or whatever spirit is inhabiting the house. Maybe we don't need to hear that specifically. Maybe, if it, it, you know, in my, in my imagined rewritten version of this, the house doesn't say that, it just commands it without using words. It wills people to, to bring the house dead bodies. So despite its flaws, I, there's something that I really like about it, but it's not succeeding as a story. Um... I'll leave that at that. Let me really, really, I really want to know what you think about this story in the comments. Um, how it could be improved, because the story, I think, is really hitting on something. Let me know what you think. Uh, today our sponsor is THQ. THQ, the wounds are still fresh.